if we could reclaim the range at 41,000, likely to get a shot back to the top side of the range. Volatility is just, just curling back up. So uh, giving another point to the bulls there. Looking at this, this is an indecision candle. So if you take out the wick to the bottom side, well, pressure on to the downside. If we take out that wick to the upside, well, uh, glory, glory, glory to the Bitcoin heavens. And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, where it is nice and rainy today. Bit of a rainy Thursday, and we're gonna take a look at Bitcoin's price action, maybe some Ethereum, maybe some of the metaverse coins as tomorrow, February 2nd, April, uh, Apple's uh, <coughs> metaverse, whatever glasses are coming out. The new reveal, there was supposed to be some hype on some of the metaverse coins and one of them in particular that is running. So we'll look at some targets there. Is it going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event? And yeah, let's start out with Bitcoin. <clears throat> and our general thesis was, hey, look, uh, once we put in a low, if we could reclaim the range at 41,000, likely to get a shot back to the top side of the range. We were just looking for our first higher low. In fact, we got it right here a couple days ago. And now, once again, if we do close uh, this little hammer candle anywhere like this uh, today, I would say that's probably good enough for me to be uh, at least getting a tap to the 618 FIB, which is going to come in right here at uh, 44,128. And um, if we look at this on a wick basis for the more volatile moves, right? That's going to come in closer to 45,000. So looking for somewhere in that range to get tagged, uh, provided that we do uh, remain above 42,224. Momentum will remain to the upside and volatility is just just curling back up. So uh, giving another point to the bulls there. Uh, however, any kind of a closure back below 41,021 or the 236, 41, call it 41,000 even. Gonna goose the odds in the favor of the bears more specifically. And you can see actually the last vector candle that has not been recovered on the daily time frame seems to be this guy right here and this guy right here so i mean a lot to contend with right there a major volume uh candle so yeah i'd be looking for somewhere anywhere in the middle of this candle to get hit more specifically somewhere between uh the not 0.5 in the 618. And that does line up with our last major horizontal area. So just uh, just be on the lookout for something like that. 32,873. I'd expect a bounce from there on the first pass and then kind of judge it from there. And again, looking at the higher time, <laughs> the higher time frame mix. The monthly time frame, which is a very powerful time frame. Um, looking at this, this is an indecision candle. So if you take out the wick to the bottom side, well, pressure on to the downside. If we take out that wick to the upside, well, uh, glory, glory, glory to the Bitcoin heavens. Uh, at least probably going to reattempt the high here at uh, 61,663. Uh, taking it back to the five day time frame, we have. Been talking about this one and saying, hey, look, if uh, volatility begins to expand from this low, low level, meaning, and keep in mind, five day volatility is now at the lowest level we've ever seen in history. And typically, this produces a 40% move upon volatility expansion. How do we define that? Well, we want to see the BBWP get above 25%, you know, depending upon how aggressive or uh, you want to be. But 
Close enough is close enough. And generally when the moving average gets a positive slope, that's another indicator. That's the white line. The blue line is the BBWP, which measures the distance of our Bollinger Bands. Let's see if I can get that old chart up. There you go. So the BBWP is going to measure the distance between the white bands. The white bands um, here and here. And as volatility expands, those bands spread apart. When volatility contracts, they get close together, close together. So uh, top side band coming in at 47.2, bottom side of the band coming in at 34,000. Also got that white 200 simple, going to go, you know, help support price. And a golden cross on the five-day. Also a uh, point for the bulls there. So long-term macro bullish, just shorter term, um, you know, pressure is going to be on. And yeah, closure above or below the, uh, I'd say 30 at 8,000 to the downside is going to get the next big move. And, you know, 44,000 to the upside, a daily closure above there could revisit the highs all the way up at 47,000 with a quick wick up there. And maybe uh, get people bullish one last more time there, one last more time. <laughs> um so that's pretty much it on the Bitcoin analysis. Going to throw up my other primary chart because that one's an old one. 15-minute, uh, uh, you know, looking bullish. So far, so good there. Momentum to the upside. And if this begins to curl around, uh, that'll tell you, well, um, running out of gas. Running out of gas at the uh, the current trajectory. I wonder what those trend lines are from. Uh, let's see here. I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses. And I'm bringing you this video because I'm going to give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto, but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto trader's dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Yep, uh, just discussion point yesterday from the live stream saying, hey, look, you know, probably gonna put in some kind of a higher low around this region right off that green 55, looks good to me. And then target the top side of the range coming in at, call it 44.6 to, yeah, I would say 44 uh, to 45,000. Somewhere in that range uh, looks good for a short term bounce. Let's check out Ethereum really quick. Ethereum continuing to be a bit of a laggard, however, uh, did not break down the, the daily support level, which would have been coming in here, I would say, you know, in this region. Uh, if we start to lose that region, that's when you start to worry a bit. Probably uh, Ethereum is going to follow Bitcoin. Um, it's just being a little bit of a laggard as of recent. And you've got daily volatility beginning to decline, giving you a mean reversion bounce off of that green 55. Where do those bounces usually head? Well, I would say somewhere in this green box for Mr. Ethereum. Short term target 24.18 to 24.6. D5 um, and invalidation is going to come with any kind of a daily closure back below 2217. So there's me analysis on a little Ethereum in the short term time frame. I guess we should take a look at on the monthly as well. The monthly huge doji candle as well. And those can be a topping signal. I do goose the odds in the favor of the bulls here for Mr. Ethereum. And also notice the uh, Stochastic is still uh, pointed to the upside on the monthly time frame for Ethereum and also for Bitcoin, 39,277. If we do close the month of February below there, that will again goose those odds in the favor of the bears. Um, in the favor of the bears, in the favor of the bears. At the moment, 
And yeah, uh, again, you know, pretty much a topping signal there with low volume. It's going to take a lot for Bitcoin to get back above this wick. So, yeah, just uh, checking that one out as well. Uh, decentralized social looking weak here on the on the weekly. Declining volatility, mean reversion bounce. I mean, this is just a stubborn one that has recovered this entire vector candle. So, and literally uh, pretty much bounced off support. But it does look like it is coming down in the short term on the weekly time frame. How's the daily look? Uh, same thing on the daily. Uh, almost going to put in a perfect sell signal with some bearish divergence coming back from this high over here. We've got a slew of higher highs alongside the RSI making lower highs one, two, three. So it looks like, you know, any, any kind of a closure here or lower uh, today is going to give us a move back to the bottom side of the range. And if we lose this area at 3127, which is a good 15% lower than we're at today, then, um, you know, looking for this support to get tapped and perhaps a move even lower. Um, so either going to have some major, and these are stubborn ones. Axelar, again, these are stubborn coins to move to the downside. So I think it's going to take a lot for that to happen. Um, I do think Neutron is going to catch a bounce off of off that green 55, uh, especially if we can recover it uh, today. It looks like short term, short term, the bulls are out here on this one, parting it, parting it to the upside. And then let's let's take a look at the darling of the market right now, which is Mr. Render rendering all his GPUs looking strong and fit here, looking healthy, looking girthy on the four hour time frame, on the daily time frame. How did I pick this trade off? Well, um, this looks like a W to me, and I think we're gonna at least approach the highs here. Um, do I think it's gonna be a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event? Not really. Uh, not really. Uh, why? Because, well, render is bullish. <laughs> render is bullish. And when we take out these wicks, um, you know, it's upwards and onwards. Perhaps for some new all-time hot. I, I, I don't know. Do I think it's a buy the rumor, sell the news event tomorrow? Perhaps if Bitcoin starts breaking down, but if Bitcoin does attempt the highs, um, I would say that uh, render is going to continue onwards and upwards. Let's see how the five day looks. Five day is going to be uh, curling back up with declining volatility. Uh, so that means it can expand from here. And 458 is going to be the pivot on the board. So as long as we're above 458 on the five day time frame, coming up in another three days and nine hours, that'll look good for a, a you know, a pretty massive move. Um, if it's anything close to what we got off of this one, the continuation drive off of this could be much, much higher. So I'll give a short term target. Uh, 640, 640 for Mr. For Mr. This guy render, um, any others interesting on the board right now? BMX, um, on the shorter term time frames looks okay. But on the higher term, I guess we're just consolidating in this range here. And, um, you know, it does look like uh, it's starting to roll over. So it needs to put in a higher low here and pop to the back side of the range if I'm even going to be remotely bullish. Declining volatility, a bounce off the green 55. Where do those bounces typically take you? Well, uh, this one could take us up to the 618 here at about 19 cents. 19, I'm oh, sorry, 0 0.01. One nine, not 19 cents. 
Um, injective, another one ranging at the highs here, bouncing off the green 55. Again, needs to put in a higher low here and really flip things back to the upside. 33.68 is going to be the pivot on the board today for Mr. Mr. Injective. Uh, Ordy. I don't know. I think this one got overplayed. I, I have no you know reason for this inscription tool to be uh, continuing to just be juiced, absolutely juiced. So if we start to lose this, just put another lower high in right here. And yeah, big moves down, big moves down. Um, would love to see this one come back into this zone right here. And I guess you could call it a um, sloppy double head, you know, shoulder kind of thing. So just watch out for this one already uh, looking like, and we'll cross down below 54, 54 on the daily time frame. But it's probably going to do whatever Bitcoin does, but more. And Bitcoin looks like it wants to bounce. So there is a bit of hopium for this one. Um, and the other one I wanted to check in was mana. Is mana going to come back to life after just being a, a dirty dog? Being a dirty dog. Or are we going to get that expansion to the downside and revisit the lows? I give this one a, a dog in the fight here. Dog in the fight. Dog in the fight. Uh, so declining volatility. As the volatility has been declining, we've been trading sideways. All we need is a tick above 55 cents. I don't think it's much to get there. Just consolidating at the highs here. And um, other than that, do we see any kind of uh, bearish signals? Silver cross to the downside, low volatility. Momentum needs to flip back up here very, very soon. A lot of these things are getting their last chance to bounce. And if Bitcoin bounces, I'll give the uh, you know odds to the bulls there. And then wanted to check on total two, which broke out of this massive range. And now we're just looking for the range highs to hold to keep the altcoin market intact. And uh, lastly, where's the fear and greed? The fear and greed index, high ho silver. Yeah, so check out this render long here, uh, up 247%. Should have put more on it. Should have put more on it. Uh, love seeing that, guys. Took this trade right before I left the office. And now I am going to put my stop loss right below there. So um, do I want to Do I want to get stopped out is the question. We'll go for a 400% profit. Confirm. And how much are we willing to risk on this one? How much? How much are we going to get a bust through the top side of this area? I don't know. I'm not willing to, to wait around for it. That's for sure. So any kind of a tick below the hourly low probably does get you a bit of a retracement. And the 15 minute uh, does need to start stair stepping its way onwards and upwards and hold that. Hold that nine exponential. Otherwise, I'm going to probably be getting out of this trade sooner than not. Sooner than not. But that's okay because it's up 200%. I'll take it. I will take it. And uh, I'll take the five grand on that one. All right, um, Axel, Neutron, Honey, this one is struggling, guys. Um, struggling to make a move. Um, probably going to get a hard bounce when it finally does. Uh, but this looks like an inverted head and shoulders, like it wants to come all the way back down. All the way back down if we break the neckline, which pretty much was broken on this candle. And uh, we do need to see a quick recovery on this one if we want to get any kind of a bullishness. Um, also looking at this one on the
Oh, let's check out Link. And Solana. Solana attempting to do what Bitcoin has done, uh, reclaim the range and trying to put in the first higher low. Um, looks fairly bullish um, as long as we can really uh, march it onwards and upwards from where we're at right now. Any kind of a closure back below this guy right here. Back below there, and it's CSI Anara lights out for this one. But other than that, I'm looking for this one actually to do something similar that Render just did. So putting in a buy off the 0.5 of the 618. Looks like it's getting that first bounce there. And we just want to see momentum, you know, really start to flip back to the upside there on the one hour. Um, on the one hour, we got low volatility and, you know, could get a rejection on the first pass, maybe give one more swing back down to about 90 bucks, but I'd expect a bounce from there. Um, the other one with a potential breakout opportunity here is Chili's. It was battling this long-term downtrend, just took it out. Now we're consolidating at the highs, any kind of a hourly closure back above this level I'm looking for a decent size move up um, for Mr. Chili's. At least uh, we come back and revisit this area at about 10 cents, 10.59, which doesn't seem like a big move, but uh, that'd be 5%, 5%, I guess it's not a big move. Unless you're on 25X leverage and that'd give you 100% return, 100%, all right. I'm going to leave you guys with that. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. I will be back tomorrow, and we will see if Bitcoin makes that lower high or not. Take care and have a good one.